Hello and uh, welcome to Wellbeing Centre Wales. We're going to do a series here on uh, student survival. So we're going to have a week of student survival and um, between us we've got a lot of uh, experience on this. I'm, my name is Mike and I'm a life coach and hippie dad, but no hair as you can tell. And this is I'm Meg, um, I'm Mike's daughter, and I'm a third year music student, so I've got lots of student experience. Well, that was a very university challenge, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through a series this week, and some of the topics that we're covering are we're going to go through the stuff about money, uh, what to do when the money comes in, and uh, how to keep as much as possible and, and not pay a lot of interest on debt and stuff like that. And uh, back what else are we doing? We'll be giving some kind of tips of things that are good to bring along to uni that really help me and um, we're also going to be giving a cooking lesson one day this week with some kind of basic guide on how to do some dishes um, and we've got some fun stuff in store. Excellent, so it should be fun. So um, check out all the other videos, uh, like and subscribe this and give us a thumbs up because we, we need all the encouragement we can get. And uh, stay tuned for some fun. Take it easy. Ta-da! Bye! Hello again. And um, this episode we're talking about uh, food and cooking utensils and so forth. And uh, this isn't just just like some attire I've decided to wear. And uh, Meg, do you want to say anything about what we're doing today? Yes, so um, first of all, I'm going to go through a book that I found really, really helpful throughout my time um, in uni. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's in that, why I think it might be a good purchase. Then Dad, I'm going to go behind the camera and Dad is going to be doing a little bit of a demonstration mm -hmm. on some of the equipment that might be useful to, to take to uni. Um, and he's going to go through how to chop up some veg and we're going to talk about how to cook a dish. So uh, Absolutely. that sounds exciting. So you can have some chef tips here because I was a chef trainer for quite some time and uh, we're going to go through some basic equipment then we're going to go through some very simple ways of uh, cutting stuff up and uh, we're going to end up with a meal and uh, we'll talk more as we go through it. I think that's pretty much everything isn't it? Yeah I think that's everything. Excellent so this will be very interesting the, the, the way that we we go through the different sections, so watch out, watch out for those smooth transitions between the scenes. They'll go smoothly, won't they? Oh yeah, oh, very absolutely. Smooth. Okay, so ta-da! Hi! Why am I with? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before Dad does his very exciting cooking demonstration, I'm going to be talking about something that I found very, very helpful when I first went to uni. So if you're about to go to uni, you've probably thought about, or you might even have had a present of a student cookbook, which is something very commonly bought. And this one here that I'm gonna recommend, I think is the best student cookbook you can buy. So it's called Nosh for Students. You can get a vegetarian version. Um, you can't get a ve vegan one yet, although I am now a vegan, but I wasn't when I started in first year. But this book, the reason why this is so brilliant is because it assumes you have no knowledge of a kitchen. So I'm very fortunate because I grew up with dad, who's a classically trained chef, but even like me, it helped me to turn like the skills that I'd been taught into much more kind of practical with more limited kitchen equipment, which you naturally have in uni. So it starts off with all of the um, amounts that they show. It's not in grams, you don't have to have scales. They'd say, pick a mug, any mug you have, and just use that as a standard and this book is absolutely brilliant for just as I said teaching you basic things so this is how long can I keep something before it goes off um, and how to reheat stuff and how to cook veggies with roasting and boiling which might sound basic to you but sometimes you need that and you don't know and it just helps you to kind of get used to different things that you might want to try cooking and something that I found very useful is this spaghetti measure here because I, I always cook too much or too little pasta. And that's just a really, really handy way. And if you were here in person, you can see this book has become absolutely battered through my um, two years of going into my th third one. With, and I've got notes written on the recipe, there's stains, and I don't cook much from it anymore because there aren't that many vegan recipes in it. 
but it's got some, even if you don't think it's your thing, it's got such, such good basic skills in it and I would thoroughly, thoroughly recommend if you're going to get one. Not sponsored, don't get anything from advertising this book, I just think if you're looking at this and you're typing in Amazon, student cookbooks and there's like a thousand results, this is my recommendation of a really, really good one. And I think it's only about six or seven pounds, so it's quite affordable. So there we are, Notch for Students, my recommendation. Brilliant. Oh, Meg, that was great. Shall we uh, put a photo of the book up here? Yes, sure. And we can write in the description as well. We'll make sure to pop in the description down below um, a link to find it on Amazon. So you can go in add it to your basket. Fantastic, brilliant. Here's some basic equipment and we, we've obviously got a couple of tea cloths. I recommend that you get at least two tea cloths. You can see that's not a particularly new tea cloth. None of my stuff is really new because I've had it such a long time. And uh, chopping board, this again, just a little plastic chopping board, nothing ex extravagant. And the brilliant thing about chopping boards are, um, I like the plastic ones, they're light, they're easy to carry. Um, when I say carry, when you're packing stuff and you're traveling back and forth, you need a great big, lovely wooden chopping board, it's gonna be quite heavy. So, two can openers. So why have I got two can openers? This is the type that most people get, first off, and it's very simple. We put the bottom bit in, put that together. We squeeze it and turn, and so the, the can goes round in this action. And that's really annoying. And I don't know why it's annoying. I find it annoying, and Meg, I think you find it annoying, did you? Very annoying, yeah. yeah. And so that's ready for the bin. This is the one that I find is really useful. The handle's on the side, and so that, little cutting thing goes on the top you you squeeze that together you press the um you press the handles together and as you turn as you turn it it cuts around the top half of the can much cleaner cut and then the lid part is in there so you can just put that in the recycling with out handling without handling anything monkey so hand openers the next thing is the peeler. Now there's different types of peeler. The one that I actually prefer has got the blade this way rather than that way. And the reason for this is when I'm holding something, the button that's squashed, but pretend it's a potato, and I'm peeling it, it's easier to, it's a much easier action, whether it's carrots, parsnips, whatever the type of vegetable it is. And um, most, most have got this little extra digging tool thing. I don't know what the proper name is for that. So if you've got an eye and a potato, a little black spot, you can twist that around and get it out. So in a good peeler is going to save you a lot of hassle and it swivels. So as it moves, it, it moves with the contour of the potato. Not exciting, I know, but that's just a little something. A knife. So. It's better to have one nice knife that's sharp than a bunch of knives that are just the handles are coming off or they're falling apart or they're never sharp. And the way to check if a knife is sharp or not is you you obviously have the, the, the sharpened blade you, and you move your finger from one side to the other. And don't press down like a mad person because you'll cut your way right through. So it's just, and you, you might get a rasp, can you hear that? Okay, that's very sharp, and there's different ways to sharpen a knife. I'm not going to show you how to sharpen a knife. You can have a look at some YouTube videos or just go and buy a little gadget or something if that's important to you. So this this type of knife has got a nice big handle and a short little stubby blade. It's called a paring knife or paring knife, and um, it's a re and everything that I'm going to do, I'm going to use this one knife to do. To, to, to cut up. So we've we've talked about uh, can openers, a peeler, a decent knife. Our next thing is a pan. So you really would only need two pans. You would need a small one for things like beans and so on. And uh, again, this is a nice little pan. I've had this absolute years. It's held on the back. That's that's welded on there. Some pans, when you look at them, you've got a handle and you've got a screw going in the back. 
And the problem with that, over time, it becomes loose, and then you're trying to find, normally, a butter knife type thing to get in there and tighten it up, and it becomes loose. Uh, it's a bit annoying. So one for, one smaller pan for things like beans or soup, or just boiling a small amount of stuff, whatever that may be. And then, you need a, a larger pan. Now, it can be a different size. I like this sort of shallow, large saute or what looks like a a, 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 um, a frying pan type thing so you can fry things in here you can make a nice sauce and it's got a lid and the brilliant thing about having the lid is the thing that we're going to cook for you in a moment you'll see we put the lid on it'll keep the moisture in there keep the flavors in there and um, it keeps a lot of the a lot of goodness in here, my uncle would say. And the last little bit of kit down to show you, even though it's very old, is a wooden spoon. This is actually bamboo, but it's a wooden spoon. And the reason I like wooden spoons is when you stir the bottom of the pan, you're not scratching all the metal, you're not putting any sort of metal in there. And so it's a, a wooden spoon, very useful. And I like this flat type because uh, you can flip things over and so on. And so as far as equipment goes, that's pretty much all that you need. And that's a good amount of stuff just to start you off because you'll be doing some, unless, unless you're gonna be doing extravagant dishes, then that's all you need. And if you could be doing extravagant dishes, you're gonna have more kit anyway, like blenders and all sorts of other stuff. But that is enough for just to cook all the stuff that you need. Brilliant, okay, so that's that. What I'm gonna do now is just show you or explain what we're going to cook and then i'm going to show you how to do some basic cutting some basic knife skills so that's the next part then so so some basic herbs and spices some salt some pepper so this pepper as you can see is peppercorn and we just pop the lid and it's a pepper mill. There's nothing wrong with getting the little, the little um, white plastic things with instant pepper or just like the little salt, the things that you can have on a table. Salt and pepper, if that's all you've got, will make quite a difference to the meal. It'll bring out the flavors of whatever you put in there. I've got some bouillon, and um, there's lots, lots available. This gives the flavor of your food a bit of a background flavor. So if you think of a one-man band or a symphony, that adds all those other types of flavours to the background. So your food, put in some bouillon. Um, there's things like stock cubes and whatever it is that you want to use, and it'll just add more flavour to it. The I've just got three basic things here. So I've obviously got loads in my cupboard, but I just wanted to pick three random things. The first thing, is paprika now this is smoked paprika and uh, the the you know it says tesco lot they, you, they all sell them so wherever you get it from smoked paprika i like smoked paprika and the reason for that is it's, it's got a nice hotish flavor not hot like curry but it's got a, just a nice spice type flavor and the smoke part gives it another flavor so if you're making chilies Smoked paprika is lovely because it gives it a little bit of a smoked flavour. And then two lots of herbs. So oregano. Oregano is great. So if you're doing pasta dishes and an Italian type food, throw some oregano in and it'll give it even more of a flavour. Uh, sort of Italian type flavour. And I could get parsley or sage, you know, whatever, whatever you like. But this is quite a good one as well. If you're only going to get a couple of herbs, get oregano and the herbs of Provence. And what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to move all out away and then we're going to do some uh, knife skills, cutting things up. Here we are. And what I've got, I've got my board and I've got a bowl to put the good stuff in, the stuff I've cut up. And I've got a little, that was left over from tomatoes. So I'm going to use that just to put my peelings in. If you if you work neat and tidy, it's much easier at the end when you're cleaning everything down rather than having a mountain of stuff. So there, there is something I'm going to mention. I like f fresh things as much as possible. And however, I a little tip for you. I like 
the chopped up lazy garlic you know, in tubes and so on. And the reason for this, even though I do like a fresh garlic clove, you could buy a bulb of this stuff, only use some, and the rest is going off. But I open this, leave it in the fridge, little teaspoon when I want it, and it makes life much easier. And unless you're doing crushing garlic and chopping it on a regular basis, this will save you money because you haven't got any stuff going off. And it's much, much easier. When I get tomatoes, I just like to have the chopped tomatoes. Again, it just makes life easier. If tomatoes on toast for breakfast, I'd actually prefer the plum tomatoes, but the chopped tomatoes, again, nice and easy, nice and quick. And so the first thing we're gonna cut is onions. Knife, when you hold a knife, um, you, you want to hold the knife so that it's it's firm in your hand, but you haven't got a manic grip on it like like you've done up a vice or something. And when you got your when you're holding something to cut, I have your fingers a bit like in a claw, because you know obviously I've got that upside down. Because as you're cutting something, if you slip, if you slip, then it'll hit your nails, and even on the sharp side, like let your nails, and it'll slide off. But if it if you're holding it like this and you cut in, you slip, could take the bottom of your fingers off. So a bit of a claw. And all I'm gonna do is just just easily slide through the bottom, turn that round, slice through the other side, so I've topped and tailed that, get rid of the rubbish. And there's lots of ways. What I like to do is just very simply just nick the outside of the onion. And then just peel that back. And that's all nice and easy. So I'll do the same with the other. So I'll do the top and tail it. Get rid of the rubbish. A little nick in there. And then just peel your onion. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut each onion in half. So just, just somewhere randomly in half. And turn it sideways. And you'll notice it's these lines on here, these cut here lines, which is very helpful. So all I'm going to do is my fingers are in the claw. I've got, I've got the knife in a gentle position. And I'm just going to, as I cut down, I'm just moving my fingers back. I'm doing this slowly so you can see. I move my fingers back, put my knife against the nails, and then the last bit, I'll flick it over, and I'll, I'll just cut it like that. And an easy thing to do is turn it 90 degrees. And the brilliant thing now, if I want it small, I can cut it small because I've got control over it, small little bits. Or if I want a bit chunkier, that's easy as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a basic dish, which is the foundation of most things you can do. So I turn that round, and I'm going to do it kind of halfway. So it's it's not tiny, but it's it's relatively small. So So I've got big fat mushrooms here and uh, it doesn't really matter what size the mushrooms are. If you've got those small ones, you can uh, just cut them in half or a quarter. But I've, I've got big ones for a reason because I wanted to show you that for what we're doing, you can, if, I cut, if I get rid of that stalk bit, we can cut that up. Here we are. So it's the same thing, treated like an onion. So my fingers are slightly curled in like a claw. I'm resting the knife against the nail there, pushing the knife forward and drawing it back. Turning the whole thing 90 degrees. And I'm just, again, my fingers here are holding it all together. And that, that finger is just keeping it in place. And that last bit, turn it 90 degrees, just flip it over, 
and cut it up. So, so that's onions and mushrooms. Now at this stage, if I was to fry that off in a little bit of oil, and I added some garlic to it, so it's frying off, obviously I take it out of the jar, then, um, and when that goes soft, that's a really good basis for lots and lots of things that you can cook. So you could add some um, mince or butternut squash or beans or whatever you wanted to, and some tomatoes, and that's, a, it's just, Onions, mushrooms, and some garlic is a really good, really good basis for lots and lots of dishes and lots of things to start, such as cottage pie, lasagna, bolognese, whatever it is. And the book that Meg mentioned earlier will give you some great tips on this. So the next thing is we can add a pepper to this. So how do you cut a pepper? So it's obviously the green bit and so on. I'm cutting down. And I, I'm trying to curve the knife a bit. So as you can see, I wouldn't cut like this normally. So this white bit here, I'm cutting in a sort of a barrel shape. So I'm getting most of the flesh, but I'm not using that bit there. So again, again, I wouldn't cut like this. I'm just doing it so you can see. I'm cutting in a barrel shape, which means I'm curving it around at the bottom. And finally, from that angle, then that gives us that bottom bit. And then all the seeds are left in there. And we're just going to cut this up into little chunks. Now a little tip for you, when, when you're cutting, when you're cutting peppers, of course you can cut, you can cut the peppers pretty much any way you want. 290 degrees, and again, just cut so they're in little bits of the right sort of size for what you want. So so a, a general rule of thumb is when you're cutting things, you want it to fit on a fork. So when, you make, when you're cutting things up, think, will that fit on the fork or not? Because if you're eating something, it'd be great if it fitted on a fork. If your knife is not as sharp as mine, the tip for peppers is to cut it inside out. So the skin is on the other side and it'll go through much easier. So again. Okay, so now we have a butternut squash. So there's different sizes. This is a small one. Just take this label off. I believe it, as you can see, it's aluminium type or some sort of foil on the back of there. So I'm just gonna I'll plan a different part of recycling later. So you've got a bulbous part of butternut squash, and you've got a thinner part of butternut squash. The bulbous part has got the seeds in. So I'm gonna cut it about halfway down, so I'm going to hold it, and I'm working a knife back and forth, there we go, and I'm just going to cut the other side so it's all top and tail. Bulbous part with seeds, top part, no seeds, you've seen that. So I'm going to cut this now in half. And I'm rocking the knife back and forth. Just because it had quite a way to go. And then in quarters, then in quarters again. quarter will be treated the same so I want to put my knife between the skin and the flesh and the, the easiest way if we stand that up and I move the knife so it's just behind and as I'm going down applying some pressure 
I made a peg zero there, it didn't come off in one, but it doesn't matter. And then we've got a nice bit of flesh, which we can just cut up. Now, this is a good size for butternut squash. Uh, again, it is just about big enough to go on a fork. And the brilliant thing about butternut squash is it takes on the flavor of whatever you mix it with. So, so instead of buying all our meat, which is more expensive, you can actually buy a butternut squash and still follow all the recipes, but when it says to use chicken or whatever, use a butternut squash. Okay, so how do we deal with the bit with the seeds? As you can see, I'm starting in the middle. Push the knife down, turn it around. And then you can see all the seeds. So we just cut in quarter again. And we simply remove the skins in exactly the same way exactly the same way that we did we cut them all into small sections and this time I'm lining it down running my knife along and and I'll do the same with the rest of it so it's very easy it's very straightforward uh, that's pretty much it for that what i would say brick tip is while i got everything out i would cut the whole i would i would cut up the whole butternut squash and i would put some into a plastic container with a lid and a brilliant size for these are those sort of takeaway plastic things you get from uh takeaways um, make sure they're washed out, they haven't had to carry in, but the rice ones are great. Wash them out and use them as uh, Tupperware or other brands that are available, I guess. Unless you've got some nice ones from home. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, in a moment, we're going to transfer to the kitchen and you'll watch me cooking this and actually making the red stuff. So see you in a minute. ta -ra. Hopefully this has been useful for you. You've seen some of the basic equipment that will be useful and helpful. And it's useful and helpful whether you're going to uni or your first home or whatever the situation is. And how to, do, how to use a knife, how to just cut up some things straightforward like an onion and mushrooms. And you can use the same principles in pretty much most things. And it, it'll just give you an idea and it should give you confidence to tackle cutting up a few things in the kitchen. This has helped you and whatever happens enjoy life have fun take risks and do the right thing whatever that is so take it easy Ta -ra. bye bye there we go oh this has been so much fun